Hello everyone, welcome to the NT Pod, the podcast all about the New Testament and Christian origins. It's episode 19, and today we're going to be asking the question, was Jesus born in Bethlehem? Back on Christmas Day in 2002, and then again in a repeat on Christmas Day in 2003, I took part in a documentary on BBC Radio 5 Live in the UK, and it was called The Real Jesus Christ. has to be said, it's not the most dramatic or exciting kind of title, because uh, you can find that there's quite a few documentaries with the same kind of title. Uh, In fact, I even took part in another one on Channel 4 back in 1999. Well, this one was presented by Clive Anderson, the guy that does uh, things like Whose Line Is It Anyway? Uh, The former barrister often appears on the BBC and other British uh, networks. Uh, And right at the beginning of the episode, they asked the question, where was Jesus born? And to Sounds of Christmas Carols, they contrasted something that I said with something that Tom Wright said. Here's a little clip of what Tom Wright said about Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. I don't see any reason why Jesus shouldn't have been born in Bethlehem. We have two different stories, one in Matthew and one in Luke. Matthew's one is told from Joseph's point of view, and Luke's one is told from Mary's point of view. And Luke has an explanation of why Jesus is born in Bethlehem, which um, Matthew doesn't give us. The thing is, these stories are told not just to give us a nice, pretty Christmas story, as we think, but they're very much political stories. But it seems to me it would do the early church no good in making up those stories if they hadn't just made them up because people knew about where families had come from and where they'd been and I think it's highly likely that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Well that's a little bit of Tom Wright who is the Bishop of Durham at the moment although when that documentary was made he was the canon theologian at Westminster Abbey and after that the documentary goes on to quote a little bit of me in contrast and I I think there's there's no point my playing that bit back because you've got the real me in 2009 to listen to instead. Uh, I wanted to comment on this because it's a natty little historical problem and it's kind of seasonal again at the moment because at the time of recording this it's uh, December. Now is what Tom Wright says in that an adequate basis to make a historical conclusion about where Jesus was born? Well, he begins by saying there that there's no reason to think that Jesus wasn't born in Bethlehem. And that's kind of problematic because there are plenty of reasons for questioning this tradition. Because when you're doing historical Jesus work, there is this phenomenon called with the grain and against the grain. And one of the things that historians do is they try and look for items that go very heavily against the grain of early Christian belief and items that go very much with it. Now, the thing about this is that items which go a little bit against the grain are inherently more likely to be historical because they are things that we we find it much more difficult to believe that they would have made up. Now, When you get with the grain material like this, when you get material like the tradition that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, it's a tough one because it's the kind of thing that you could imagine somebody making up. Why do I say that? Well, in the Old Testament, in Micah, in fact, in Micah 5.2, you have a prophecy that a ruler will come from Bethlehem. Let me read it to you. It goes something like this. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Now, let's imagine that you were somebody in the first century who had absolutely no idea where Jesus was born, and you wanted to find out where Jesus was born. What would you do? Well, if you believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the one anointed to rule his people Israel, what you would do is you'd go to the Old Testament, to the Hebrew Bible, and you would see if there was anything there that would give you any clues about it. And there, in Micah 5.2, is this prophecy of the ruler that will come from Bethlehem. So could it be that Matthew, or someone like him, actually invented this tradition on the basis of this Old Testament scripture? Well, in fact, that's the very kind of process that lots of people think is going on here, and that what you have is is a process that the scholar John Dominic Crossan calls prophecy historicized, where, where some of the earliest Christians they search the scriptures to try and find things that Jesus might have fulfilled. So here what you would have would be early Christians, perhaps the first evangelist Matthew himself, going and finding this detail and then creating a narrative on the basis of it. 
Is there any reason to think that Matthew might have done that? Well, he quotes that whole text from uh, Micah 5.2, so he clearly thinks it's important. It comes in the context of the Magi who are on the way to see the baby Jesus and his, his birth. And they stop off in Jerusalem and they consult King Herod and then you get the scripture in the narrative. It's, it's a very cleverly told story. But is there anything else? Is there anything which might suggest that this detail about the birth in Bethlehem wasn't invented? Well, for some scholars, the fact that you get the detail also in Luke's gospel is telling. In Luke's birth narrative, you get the birth in Bethlehem as well. And lots of people think that Luke's gospel is independent of Matthew's gospel, in which case then both Matthew and Luke independently are witnessing to uh, an earlier tradition. The difficulty, of course, with that sort of view is that if I'm right that Luke knows Matthew's gospel, then Luke isn't an independent witness to this tradition. Doesn't mean it's wrong, but it means that Luke isn't independently witnessing to the same tradition that he could have got it, in other words, from Matthew. What about other evangelists? What about other gospels? Well, there's no mention of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem in Mark's gospel. John's gospel has just a brief notice, and it's quite an interesting one. It's in John 7.42, where you get this saying, Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? And this is something which is, which is kind of uh, people discussing Jesus and wondering, you know, what's going on. Some people think that this text might even witness to Jesus not having come from Bethlehem. The fact that the, that the, that the people in the crowd don't seem to be aware of where Jesus was born. You know, some people think that this is, is quite telling. However, it does look like this is a bit of kind of Johannine irony. The reader sees on two levels what's going on here. First of all, the reader thinks, ah, oh, yes, but he was born in Bethlehem. And also, more importantly for John's Gospel, you think his true origin isn't in Bethlehem, but his true origin is in heaven from where he came down. So assessing whether or not Jesus was born in Bethlehem is a difficult one. It goes very much with the grain as I was saying because there's lots of reasons you could imagine that somebody would make up this tradition. But the thing about that is that it doesn't mean just because something goes with the grain that it is necessarily unhistorical. It's just that it's difficult to test it. Is there anything else? Is there anything that could suggest that this might indeed be an original nugget of tradition? Well, there is one small consideration, and I myself don't know really how much weight to put on this kind of argument, but I'll put it out there anyway because I think it's important that everyone makes their own judgment on these things, and I don't just tell you what I think you ought to believe. But in... Romans, in the epistle to the Romans, which takes us back pretty early, Paul already in chapter 1 verse 3 speaks about Jesus as being of the seed of David. Now this means that from very early on, Jesus is already regarded as being the son of David, a title that he often has in the Gospels. Now if Jesus was thought of as being somehow of the seed of David, descended from King David from ancient times, could it be that that tradition was itself generated by traditions that remembered that Jesus was born in David's own town of Bethlehem? Could it be that somehow Jesus' birth in Bethlehem triggered for his family the thought, well, could he be someone special? Could he be someone different? Especially if the other members of the family were not born in Bethlehem and were born in Nazareth. I don't know what to make of that. I think on balance, if I had to make a judgment, I would say it's more likely that Jesus was born and bred in Nazareth and that as time went on, the worry about the Messiah being born somewhere obscure like Nazareth gave way to the desire to place him somewhere more special, the town of David, fulfilling that prophecy from Micah. But I might be wrong about that, and it's always important to admit where we might be wrong, and to say that the evidence could go uh, in a number of different ways. Well, thanks very much for listening to the latest episode of the NT Pod. Uh, you can find me on the web at podacre.blogspot.com. You can Google for the NT Pod, or you can find me on Duke University's iTunes U. Oh, one more thing. 
sorry that it's been such a long time between episodes. Uh, what happened was the bottom fell out of November and December for me. Uh, I was very busy with lots of other things. And this is the reason why I always resisted saying that the NT pod was going to be a weekly podcast because I knew the time would come when I would find it difficult to do it every week. But I've got one more to come before Christmas and it will also be on a theme that is related to the Christmas festival for those of you that are interested in that. So thanks again for listening and I'll see you soon.